Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, channel. Thank you very much for joining me at this time in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to develop again a very amazing game, the name of which is Flappy Bird. I know you have played this game many times in your life, but uh, how to develop this using Python, that's what is pretty exciting, right? So that's what we are going to do today in this lecture. I The lecture, the platform which I am making use of right now is sublime text on which i will be defining all the python code with the help of which we can develop a full-fledged uh, you know this uh, uh, what we call it flappy bird game right now uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to import the modules so these are the two just give me a short moment i'm facing some issue over here right now yeah perfectly fine so the first thing we need to do is we need to import these two modules. The first one is Pygame and the second one is that we'll be using today is Sys. Sys is for system. Right. Now the second thing that we need to do is we need to initiate this Pygame module and how to do that? We can use this Pygame.init function. Right. Uh, after this thing, we need to create a window on which we can get everything reflected. Right. How can we get a window for our game? So for that, we can use something like screen. Okay, that's the variable you will find in all the Pygame uh, games. Okay, the games which are developed in Pygame, you'll find this variable over there. And you know, this is basically used for storing the screen on which the user want to see the game. Okay, so uh, if you want, you can use some other variable also. It is totally your call. But just because of your understanding, I have used the same variable which, you, which uh, you know, the other professionals uh, use generally while creating games using Pygame. So now let's make use of this Pygame module. And here you will find this load function with the help of which you can load a background for your image for your uh, you know game window but instead of using this load function we'll first try to create that window on which uh, you know our game will be appearing so for that we can use this uh, display function and there is this function named set mode you can use for setting the dimensions of the screen on which you want to see your game so I would like to set it equal to this 1024 because generally, you know, Flappy Bird screen is something like a, a mobile screen, you know, so that's the dimensions, I think, which will help us in getting a mobile, a mobile kind of screen. Let me just run this code and show you the window which this code is going to create for us. So let's check it out. So that's the window. And as you can see, uh, it automatically went away. We didn't, uh, you know, I didn't pressed any button. It automatically went away. Why? It's because, you know, the interpreter executed these lines of code. And after that, it didn't find any event. So that's the reason the window appeared for some seconds and it then get got closed automatically now if you want the window to get closed only if uh, you know some event occur suppose the window should get closed if the user presses the cross button which is right on the top of the window so if you want something like that you can make use of this while loop you can define this while loop so while uh, this condition is true so we can uh, then make use of this for loop and here we can use this function named get right so that's the function which will return to us all the events which will take place at the time when the game will be in running mode right so suppose the user presses the cross button which is, you know, this cross button. I'm talking about this cross button. So if he presses that cross button, I would like 
to get a notification of that and how we'll do it we can use this event dot type and at any point of time if it will become equal to quit right if the user will press that cross button so automatically what will happen this event will take place and if when this event will take place then pi game should get closed automatically so that's the function which is going to help us in doing the same and besides that i would like to exit from the system also right okay let's now check it out whether it is going to help us in getting the window for a longer time in front of us or not okay it is showing us some error now what is this error if event dot type equal to equal to int object is not callable okay so why is it showing us this error we have to check that okay it's not a function it's a simple property that's the mistake i made while defining that quit over here let me now check okay so now we are able to see this window and uh, let me close it so we can we are able to close it also right okay so we are done with creating a window on which now we will be putting everything whatever we want to see in our game so the first thing which i would like to do is uh, you know i would like to control the frame rate per second how to do that we can make use of function the function named clock which we can easily find in the pi game module so pi game dot time dot clock so that's the one with the help of which you can control the speed of the game you know what i want is uh, uh, i want to get everything updated i want my game or you can say the computer to update for me everything or uh, regularly while the game is in running mode and it should happen automatically now if i want something like that to happen what i can do i can make use of this pi game dot display dot update function so that's the function which is going to update everything whatever has been defined uh, you know in between this while loop and this statement it, this statement will update everything uh, for every frame that will get created fine now in order to uh, define a speed you know the speed with which you would like to uh, get the frames changed so you can make use of this clock dot tick function and here you can put the speed so i would like the frames to get changed with this speed if you want you can pass 30 60 whatever value you want to you can put it over here it is if you'll reduce it to 30 suppose so automatically the speed of the game will increase right right now if i will run the game you will not be able to see any kind of changes over here because we don't have anything right now on this window okay now how to get something reflected on this window so we can make use of surfaces you know on this display window which i just showed you we can put different surfaces and on those surfaces we can define different kind of objects let me show it to you with the help of an example so this is the function which is helping us in controlling the speed of the game now let's do one thing let's come down and if you want me to load a good background okay so let me first show you the folder in which i have all my images saved so i've already downloaded these images which i will be using for this flappy bird game and this is the first part which i'm shooting today the remaining three parts we are going to shoot it uh, you know afterwards okay so that's the one which i will be making use of uh, for now it is with name background dash day and its size is 288 by 512 as you can see if you want i if you want i can show you the properties window also where you will find all the properties of this image like this so it is of uh, uh, this size eight it's of 8 kb and it is its complete name is background dash day dot png right 
Okay, now if you want me to bring it on the display window, how uh, will I do that? That's the question. So what we can do, we can create a surface and after that we can put the image on that surface and then we'll, we can call that surface on the display window in order to get the image reflected on the window. So BG surface, that's the variable. I would like to load my background image in so pygame.image.load function we can use for loading our background image let's uh, copy the name of the image from here so i'm copying it from here the complete name is background dash day dot png okay and now you know if you if i run this uh, uh, code over here i will not be able to see anything getting reflected on this display window why because i haven't called this image yet on my display window so i've i'm done with loading this image uh, on this variable now the next thing that i have to do is i have to create a surface and uh, uh, i have to call that surface on the display window so as to see the this image on my display window and how to do that so we can come down over here and let's come out of this for loop and here we can have this function screen dot blit so blit is used for block transfer right that's the function which helps us in bringing everything on the display window now we have saved our image in this variable bg underscore surface right and then we'll have to define the coordinates also at which we would like to see our image getting reflected. So if I'll pass these coordinates, 100 comma 200, let's see where will we uh, get the image on our display window. Okay, so we are getting it over here in the middle, right? In the center, we are able to see the image. Now, you know, I want my image to cover the entire black screen. Fine, because you know half of my screen is display is in black and uh, the image is covering only half of uh, the display window. I don't want to see that kind of a view. I want to see my image covering the entire display screen. In order to do that, we can make use of transform function so that so as to increase the dimensions of our image. So. We can simply use this uh, bg underscore surface again and let's uh, call pygame dot transform function and here we can use this scale 2x and simply we can pass this bg underscore surface over here as a parameter to this scale 2x function. Right, so now what this function will do, it will scale up the size of this uh, surface for us, this uh, scale up the size of this image for us. And now if I will run this code, so that's what I am getting right now. It's not looking nice, right? I'm not able to see the complete image. Let me change it to 0, 0 and see what's going to happen now. Okay, so that's the beautiful background. I was talking about and it is uh, looking extremely amazing right let me just close this window okay so I am done with uh, getting the you know background on my uh, this display window if I'll change the size to 600 then automatically this window will get affected and that's what you will uh, get to see over here right and let me do one thing let me just change it back uh, change it back to 1024 great okay now it's time for us to get the floor of that flappy bird game in the bottom of the display window now how to do that we are going to make use of same concept. The first thing that we'll be using is this code which uh, will help us in loading the image in a particular variable. So the variable I will be using for this uh, floors image is 
floor underscore surface and let me just show you the image which I will be using as a floor. So that's the one, right? And what are what is its complete name? So it is with name base.png. Right. So how to call it here? We can simply replace it with base.png. And you know, in order to make it uh, uh, compatible with my game, we can I can make use of this convert function. So, you know, it is going to convert this image in such a form which will not uh, put lot of load on my, uh, you know, computer. Or you can say uh, it will change it to, in, uh, change it to in a form uh, which is going to be compatible with the game's configuration. Okay, so it is, uh, that's what we can use this convert function for. And that's how we can define it after this load function, right? Okay, it's time for us to come down and let's use this transform function for changing the dimensions of this floor. So we can again use the same concept. I'm putting it over here. Right, so this is going to change the uh, dimensions of the floor and it will scale it up to twice its original size. Right, because here, because here we have used scale to it. Okay, now how to get the get, get this floor on our game window? So for getting this floor on our game window, we'll use the same concept again that we used for getting the surface on our display window. So we'll use this blit function, right? And here we have to just change this BG to floor. See, game development with Python is very simple. You just need to know the right thing. You just need to know the right concepts, right? Okay, and besides this, uh, what else can we do? So we need to define a specific position also for this floor. Let me first run this game and see where the floor is, uh, where we are going to see the floor. So we are able to see the floor getting reflected right on the top, but I don't want to see it here. Uh, we would, I would like to see it, uh, you know, somewhere in the bottom. So let me do one thing. Let me just... Okay, here we need to replace it with floor. Sorry, I forgot to do that. You know, that's the reason why we were not able to see the background. So the background is visible to us and this floor is also visible to us right now. Let me close this window. Let's define a variable over here with the help of which we can control the, uh, you know, uh, what we call it, position of the floor. So we are going to have something like this, floor x and underscore position and let's assign it this value zero. Okay, now I am, I would like to come down here and floor surface comma zero, this is fine. So in place of this zero comma zero, we can pass something else. Let's do one thing, let's pass this floor uh, underscore x comma position. Have I initialized it with something or not? Yes, I have initialized it with zero. And here I would like to pass 980, you know, because the dimensions of a window are 1024. Let me check where I will see my floor now. Okay, so why are we not able to see it? Just a second, I think I'll have to change the resolution of uh, my system. You know, that's the reason why we are not able to see that window. If I'll change it to 900. Okay, still, you know, that uh, floor is not visible to us. Maybe it is somewhere down, you know, in the bottom. So that's the reason we are not able to see it, but it is there. No, it is there. How shall we bring it up? Uh, let me change it to 500. Okay, now if I will run this game, so we are able to see this floor over here. I think it is uh, better. No problem. Let's keep it here. 
and let me shift it to 600 now if i will run my game so i'm able to see the floor over here okay so now it is looking perfectly fine right let me close the window okay so we are able to see the floor also we are able to see the background surface also it's time for us to define a code with the help of which we can make the floor move uh, in the backward direction because you know in flappy bird what happens the floor is the one which moves and it seems as if the bird is moving in the forward direction so that's uh, uh, that's the trick in this game now how to make the floor move in the backward direction so as i've told you you know this while over here is creating uh, is creating some frames which are changing regularly and that those frames we are not able to see you know that change we are not able to see because the change is happening at a very fast pace so here what this is the variable which is actually uh, responsible for positioning the floor on the display along the x-axis so what we can do we can change the value of this variable for every frame that this while loop is creating so that's the concept which i will be using here so what i am doing i am making use of this simple formula plus is equal to one now with every frame change the value of this variable will get incremented by one and if i will now run this game so that's what you will get to see so we can see the floor is moving in the forward direction right now it's looking really amazing isn't it okay let me close this window now if i want to see the floor moving in the backward direction i'll have to change it to minus and if you want to see it uh, moving really fast we can change it to 300 let's uh, run this game okay it's moving slowly right now let's do one thing uh, if i'll change it to i think 30 it will run fast you'll be able to see it running fast okay. it is still slow maybe there is some issue with the you know this windows or uh, the operating system i'm using but it is we are able to see it moving right and it is looking perfectly fine let me close this window if i'll change it to six let's see what is going to happen so i think we'll be able to see it moving pretty faster yeah so yes we are able to see it moving pretty faster and it is uh, looking great right now you know after certain amount of time the floor is getting completely disappeared from this display i don't want that to happen i want to see the floor i want the user to always see the floor on this window i don't want the user uh, to know at any point of time this floor uh, should go invisible or should go disappear from the screen i don't want that to happen so how can we prevent it from getting disappearing or how can we bring it back what we can do we can make use of if control statement that is absolutely right you know that's what i generally use for controlling these kind of things so floor underscore x position so the moment the value of this uh, floor underscore x position will become smaller than or equal to minus let's say 576 so what should happen the floor x position should become again equal to zero let's see whether this is going to help us in getting the required result or not so we are able to see this floor moving and it is completely gone and it reappeared right it reappeared but you know still you know this animation is not looking good i don't want to see this gap which is visible to us right now so what we can do let's change this value to uh, how about 400 i think that will do now it is still the same if i'll change it to 200 then what will happen 
okay now it is better it is much better uh, let me change it to 100 i think that will give us the right output okay now it is looking perfectly fine fine so you know that's how you can uh, bring your things on your display window and that's how you can get this floor moving uh, that's how you can get this animation so this is it from my side in this lecture if you guys have any queries please let me know about the same you can share your queries with me in the comment section let me uh, visit let me check my comment box if i have anything to answer definitely i would like to i would answer that query of yours and in case you have an, any new ideas in your mind or you want to avail the coding classes facility which i am providing to my students right now in which i am teaching uh, you know this game development things and things related to artificial intelligence and you know uh, things related to uh, what we call it uh, things related to uh, mobile app development so you're most welcome to join my classes right okay so tarun pandey thank you very much dear for joining me at this time in this tutorial code with ksd may i have your name please dear so that i can shout out your name by the way thank you very much for uh, checking out this video at this time it means a lot to me and please do not uh, forget to like and share this video in your groups so as to make it reach to the maximum students possible because you know uh, in the next few days we are going to design this whole flappy bird game and also uh, this you know today we shooted the first part of this game in uh, tomorrow we are going to shoot the second part and there are going to be four parts which I will be shooting uh, for this game. So I would like all of you to be there with me in the tutorial so that you can also learn to code these amazing things with me. Right. In case you have any queries, in case you have any questions, you're most welcome to ask me those questions. You can put those questions uh, in the comment box. Definitely, I am going to respond to all your queries. So any questions, any queries, anything you would like to ask from me please do let me know about the same i am uh, on my channel right now and i am checking the chat okay so i don't think uh, that you guys have any queries related to what i have taught you today in case while developing this flappy bird game you come across any issue please do let me know at the very same time just by putting your query in the comment section you can do it very easily you can let me know about your queries right and definitely whenever i will get the time i will respond to your queries or what i will do i'll take the note of your queries i'll make a note of it and i will uh, reply to your queries with suitable answer in the next class uh, right in the beginning i hope that will do so this is it from my side hope you guys enjoyed this lecture a lot thank you very much for being there with me in this tutorial have a great great day ahead god bless you all and have a great day bye bye take care and shubratri